My name is Tanya Fincham along with Juliana Nicolasian. We're with the Oklahoma State University Library, part of the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program. And we're in, in Mead, Oklahoma today, which is July the 1st, no, uh, <laughs> July the 2nd, 2011. And we're with Popcorn the Clown. So thank you for inviting us into your home today. Well, I'm glad you came in because I hope I give you a little part of the history of clowning. Okay. Well, let's start by having you tell us a little bit about your childhood, where, when you were born, where, and... I was born at a very early age, somewhere in the East, and I wanted to be a magician. I always hung out at the Gamin Magic House, but then I seen you had to carry all these props. <laughs> so then I locked in. I used to do spook shows. Do you know what spook shows are? I have no idea. Halloween. When the theater would show Frankenstein and Batman, or no, who was that guy? The vampire. Count Dracula. <laughs> Thank you. What was his real name? Vladimir. No, 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 that's the other one. That's the updated one. <laughs> Anyway, I started out on spook shows where theater would bring in the horror movies in black and white, and then magicians and the hunchback and the head chopper and all that. I started on spook shows with Phil Chandler. Number one in clowning, you need a good announcer. <laughs> yes. And where was this? somewhere in the east. <laughs> I played a lot of places. Well, why do you consider your hometown? Mead, Oklahoma. Okay. The rest of it disappeared. I became popcorn. And if you ask anybody within six miles, <laughs> they don't know my name. Well, how did you come up with the name Popcorn. I stole it. <laughs> yeah, from a guy named Popcorn, and he was not a clown. And it's a catchy name. They'll always hear it. Yes. And from the spook show, what next? Shrine circuses and birthday parties and stage shows and corporate things in Jersey and I've had an interesting life. I know. We want you to tell <laughs> us about it. What what drew you to clowning? What made you want to become a clown? Never. 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 I never thought I'd end up in the business. And I spent thirty some years there. I had a knack, that's all I can tell you. That, but even Bob's father said, you got a knack. Well then how did you hook up with Bob's father? Not till he, well, I moved here. <laughs> I've seen him and here and there. His father was a showman. Mm -hmm. And I was always told, told oh, old clowns. I consider myself the last of the old timers. We did the same gags, we did the same stuff, but you gotta switch it. When we gonna rehearse? First show we rehearse. <laughs> you do this, you do that. Sometimes there were 30 clowns. Then it became 10 and then it became Eight, seven, six, five, two. <laughs> There's no clown alleys anymore. I haven't noticed any either, huh? No, there's no clown alleys. They just run in and do their self in their own. Yes, I, I remember even working with old timers. I'm an old timer. <laughs> 
So 37 years, when did you retire then? From uh, whenever I came here, and none of us can remember. <laughs> <laughs> I think one night I was doing a 300-mile jump and fell asleep, and if it wasn't for a trucker, I would have hit a tree. I time to go find a home. I think all circus people want a home. Thank Bob you. hated the business, and he grew up in it. <laughs> Get tired of being on the road? Uh, too old. I've fallen down and can't get up. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I used to tell him when I, before I retired, if I dropped dead in the ring, make it funny and get me out of there. <laughs> how, would you, how would you come up with your costume? Oh, here and there, and here and there. The violin's me. The camera's me. Bob painted that picture. That's me. And bitched about, or complained about, <laughs> the pin I put on it. Because I always said, no autographs. And there's certain kids you can give an autograph to. <laughs> I remember seeing grandfathers come. I've never been to the circus. Let me get you a seat. I used to do meet and greet on the way in. So, so Popcorn, could you tell us the first time you met D.R. Miller? Uh, can't answer that. I mean, what you thought about him or? Nobody liked him. <laughs> he was a showman. He liked me. Don't ask me. I don't know. You made him laugh? I have no idea. See if he can find me, but that's my clowns on Carson and Barnes, English, Spanish. <laughs> See, could you, could you run me through, you know, maybe a, a typical act during your Carson and Barnes years? <sighs> Hurry up, change, and wait. Because <laughs> you had to wait for an accident. If somebody fell or if there was a miscue or you had to be ready so he had to hurry and change and run back and wait. It was called hurry up and wait. <laughs> oh God, we didn't have to go in this time. <laughs> you said you used different props? Oh yeah, well, I made them out of junk. Like what? One or two? Uh, uh, that camera. I made out of old film boxes and an old tripod from a surveyor <laughs> and took pictures of jackasses. Pretended to? No, I took pictures of jackasses. <laughs> it's entertainment. Remember the show Hee Haw? <laughs> well, during, the, during, yeah. during one show, about how many times would you change costumes? Or maybe three. Yeah, maybe three. Because you kind of wore the same costume for each thing. But you had to change. You change a hat. You change a vest. Just a little different. They don't see it. <laughs> and the tacky beat up old props in the spotlight. They look pretty. <laughs> And the kids loved you? I have no idea. I entertained both sides. Adults, children. Uh, David Rawls used to say, you're, you're a little too tacky. <laughs> but I'd done that for 12 years. <laughs> and you have a, had a dog act? I a had dog a dog act? act, a chimp act, two lions. Several ladies. <laughs> oh, they all thought it was a fantasy. I said, no, it is not a fantasy. It's mud, rain, snow, sleep, wrecks. Yes. Yeah. When if you can survive in the circus, you can survive anywhere. Yes, you're independent. Sometimes you don't have water, 
Sometimes you don't have electricity. You pay your own insurance. You pay your own idea. Which you didn't hear from David. <laughs> yes. No, you paid everything. You got a salary. Maybe gas, cookouts. But you were responsible for everything else. Independent contractor. Oh, I'm losing time here. You're fine. And when did you have a trailer or a camper trailer or? I how? always had a camper or a trailer or a vehicle. Yes. Independent. Independent. No, I don't live in a sleeper. <laughs> Have you slipped in any sleepers yet? Not on this trip. <laughs> <laughs> Did that one season just to save money because I knew it sooner or later I had to quit. But damn, the sleepers are atrocious. <laughs> You didn't hear that, did you, Dad? <laughs> yeah, gotta gotta go there when it's all in and take a look at everything. Well, when you're performing, are you paying attention to the crowd? What what's what are you? I I pay attention to everything, the crowd, how they're moving. It's not going over. We're going to cut it short. <laughs> get in and get out. So you're responding to the crowd and everything. Yes, I have no idea. I just had it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm, I, I had an outline of everything I did, but never rehearsed. First show is a rehearsal. After that, then we'll figure it out. I've been in the Kennedy Center, the old uh, Cincinnati Gardens, Tom Snyder, Captain Kangaroo, Bozo, all made, almost made the KISS tour. <laughs> almost. <laughs> Uh, Did you have any showbiz idols you looked up to? Any clown idols? No. No. Uh, Lou Jacobs was good. Felix Adler was good. Otto Gribling. Emmett Kelly. Uh, no, I just tried to copy all of them. <laughs> That's what Bob's dad said. You're just, you remind me of all the old ones. I'm the last one left, I think. How would you come up with your new material? I just rehashed the old stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I remember on Carson and Barnes, all these clowns I just showed him my mother about. They hadn't seen a clown gag in years. It was all mostly Hispanic people. And I did the reducer where you put the fat lady in and boom, out comes. <laughs> and it actually got an applause at rehearsal from Circus performers. I told Jennifer, I said, you'll never hear that again. <laughs> See, there's rushes. There's rushes. Nothing better than a standing ovation, which you don't ex ever expect. But you got a few. Huh? But you got a few standing ovations. Oh, yeah. They, they bring goosebumps yet. <laughs> I don't know. I had a very interesting life. I met a lot of interesting people. I traveled, so I tried to see everything and hit the flea markets and uh, on my way. 
Oh, there goes Brother Chris. <laughs> so on the circus lot, did you have to do other things? Or we you just had to worry about crying? I learned that a long time ago. <laughs> no, I was a performer. And clowns in the old days, there used to be 30, 40 clowns on some of these shows. And then the shows got less. When I started, there were around 150 shows on the road. I think now there might be 10, 15 at the most. And all of a sudden you had nowhere to go. And the clown alleys got less and less. And in the old days, Every clown had a character, like the cop and the buffoon and the pretty one. <laughs> but that all disappeared. Beatty, Clyde Beatty, that don't exist. It's Cole Brothers now. They used to have a tent for the clowns called Clown Alley. Uh... Most performers didn't want to dress with the clowns, so we had our own place. <laughs> I have no idea. Cookhouse, management, performers, working men, clowns. <laughs> but that disappeared. But how do you want to sit next to somebody that kind of smells. <laughs> it's a neat life. You either like it or you don't. Some joined the circus and lasted three, four days. Some might have made it three weeks. They come and go. And I have no idea why I ended up there in the circus. I think I felt I loved the audience. It was a challenge. <laughs> Talk a little oh, bit God. about your makeup, what you were saying before. Oh no, all, all, remember Ringling Clown College? Okay, they all painted their stuff on. Mine was put on with fingers. <laughs> And it slowly went from white, white face pretty to corn. What I wanted to finally do was eliminate the makeup. Because on some shows I used to take it off the last gag and go out and do the gag. So I'd get out front because <laughs> you weren't allowed in makeup or show wardrobe. And it worked. But then I retired. <laughs> yeah. Didn't want to die on the road. I'd rather die right here in Cornville. <laughs> now, would you have to make your own wardrobe? or? Uh, I usually went to thrift shops and bought ugly shirts. and <laughs> Thrift shop. <laughs> I always look at the shoes for clowns. Would you have to order? You had to order those from somewhere. I got my last pair, but it's in the archives. Ar they were made by Griffin. Griffin. Theatrical shoes. They don't exist anymore. Handmade. Shoe size inside. Oh. They're in the archives out there, but that's what they look like. And what are you referring to as archives? I have so much stuff. Uh, here, here. Your personal, your, your personal. Well, plus what people, I don't collect. I just acquire. <laughs> Look around the house. But not at the circus museum that they're start, trying oh, to start. Well, that's what I'm waiting on. They better get in gear because my stuff's getting dry rot. <laughs> Are they still going to put it downtown? Yes, across from the library. <laughs> well, did you have a favorite costume? Which one you liked the nah, best? Yeah, didn't matter. Tried to fit it to the thing. Changed each season? 
no, winter, fall, summer clothes. <laughs> Wardrobe, I always did have one of those. Even a big tweed cop of a top coat, tweed, remember those? <laughs> Earmuffs <laughs> and gloves. <laughs> It used to get cold. I've seen it sleep. Did they mention Gainesville, Texas? They used to have a community circus. You know about that? I heard about it. <laughs> and did you perform with it some? No, no, no. That was before my time. <laughs> Well, would you ever take new clowns under your wing? Oh, too many. I'm from Ringling. I can't do that. <laughs> I've had a lot, including Spanish, which I couldn't communicate with. No, we work big talk. Putting up the top. No, you're clowning. Mr. Miller said you're clowning. <laughs> I don't. I don't think I got a picture of them. Is it, they ended up being funny. Finally, <laughs> is it hard to teach somebody how to climb? Yes, they either got it or they don't. I've been shot with a blank in the hand in the posterior area because <laughs> you made those things out of. Shells, explosions, firecrackers. That's why I don't hear good out here. <laughs> I was small. I always got stuck in the box. <laughs> I started out as a pointer. <laughs> I said, this sucks. <laughs> then I became a producing clown. Then I ran out of clowns. Then I did single things. And announcer helps. That's a simple, stupid gag that I invented. Would you work with the announcer on the script? No. <laughs> Play it by ear. <laughs> Play it again, Sam. <laughs> no, yes. Jim Royal was a good announcer. A friend of my, most of my friends aren't around anymore. Phil Chandler. Yes. He was kind of my agent because he didn't want to work with another clown unless it was me. But we clicked. Albert White. I'm just running through names. Al Albert White. Ringling Clown under the big top and when the clown college started they wanted him to go to the college and he said, what? I've done 40 years. Hey, they want me to go to college? <laughs> yeah. Oh. It's a neat history. It was I enjoyed it. It was the weather, the mud, the rain. My parents used to come, why do you live like this? I'm kind of free, really. As long as you did your job, cause no hassle. I never had anybody up my whatever, <laughs> really. Would you have a, a signature piece that you brought to your your act? Well, sometimes I'd bring the camera, the violin. That was more stage than anything. I've worked stage shows, festivals, fairs, good food at fairs, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and always the lady auxiliary had good home cooking. <laughs> A lot of that stuff is gone now. It is. 
how how would you learn of those gigs or how would you get them lined up? A, people would call me. You had a reputation then. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess. No, I don't know. The easiest part was it was easy. <laughs> Bob hates it. He clowned. You gotta remember, he grew up in the circus. And uh, everybody says that's humiliating. I, it's not if you get a laugh. If you don't get, don't get a laugh, you might get it the second show. <laughs> or the third show. <laughs> Every audience, audience a little different. Yes, you can't, you can't tell. And I used to like to do meet and greet, bring them in and try to calm them down and you're coming to the circus or blah, blah, blah. When you did that, did you speak or were it was all pantomime? Oh, no, no, I pantomime, but no, that was step right this way, have your ticket ready. They already turned their ticket in. <laughs> <laughs> I loved the audience. I, I like the smell. The big top. Shrine dates are like playing ringling things and coliseums. I've done the main dates in the snow, the Jimmy Cole show in the snow. Been coast to coast, California, East Coast, Texas, Canada. But I got to see more than people I graduated with. <laughs> and I haven't been to a class reunion in 55 years. <laughs> I wonder how many's left. <laughs> And all the click. See, it was a click. I worked on plays. I did all the blah, 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 blah. During high school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have brothers and sisters? No. <laughs> I should have. <laughs> and you said you were a towner? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I had, I got accepted in a very hard business. Mm -hmm. And did it for 30 some years. And did your parents come and watch a couple of times? I, well, finally. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes, finally. And, uh, oh, I'm glad they took dad's driver's license away because he was a terrible driver. <laughs> Do you remember your last show? Yeah, kind of. Somewhere in Bloomington, Illinois. And I said, that's it. That was after I almost wrecked. And I drove from Bloomington, Illinois, or Indiana, there's two of those, <laughs> all the way here. And I said, is that property on the hill still for sale? Why Oklahoma? I know you. I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, you've seen everywhere. I liked it here. It was, look how laid back it is here. Mm -hmm. And I know knew Bob from a long time ago. I, the circus is sixty five miles of a boring highway. <laughs> I'm a member of the Showman's Club. I think number 49. <laughs> I don't know. I got to look. All I can say, it happened a long time ago, and all of a sudden it was over. Yes, it was over. Do you miss it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, here it comes. <laughs> There's nothing better than the smell, the roar, the cr if you can get them to roar. <laughs> well, describe the smell. 
popcorn. Uh-huh. Describe the smell. I mean, like cotton candy, elephant dung, <laughs> thoroughly dried and cured. I give D.R. Miller one of those for Christmas. He liked me. I don't know why. It's just a combination of all those smells together then. Yes, the smell of corn, the cotton candy. It's much preferable to step in elephant dung than dog dung. <laughs> dung. <laughs> I <laughs> gotta wash your shoes off. <laughs> chimps. Chimps are like having three hell's angels. No, they're a hassle. When you have animals, you can't leave. You can't get a babysitter. You can't leave them in the truck without fan or air conditioning. Lions, the same thing. They can't exist in the snow, I found out. I've just had a lot of... Look at all the scars! (laughs) Okay. Did you ever get injured? (laughs) Only by stupidity. Or overconfident. Shot out of a cannon? I slid down the barrel one time and I said, No, no, no. Make yourself stiff and straight. (laughs) No, (laughs) no. Thought I wanted to be a flying trapeze artist because I was very athletic. No, it wouldn't. You you see it on whatever you've seen them. It that platform looks about like this. No, it's like this, <laughs> and the bar must weigh ninety pounds to pull you out of the loft. No, oh, didn't want to be a flyer after that. I, my back was sore from landing in the let go popcorn. Oh, <laughs> it's different. The people risk risk their lives, not only during the performance, but traveling, the weather, the, yes. I've seen the rain coming in my trailer. <laughs> Been in two or three tornadoes. Hurricane. Surviving. Most important thing is lights and water. (laughs) Everybody says, you gun everything in here. I'm paying for it and I got lights, water, and not five gallons of hot water. (laughs) Yes mud, waiting for the elephants to pull you off. Clowning is basically a lost art, but they all become high-line singles. That's a muddy lot in Greenville, Ohio. (laughs) Well, it is muddy. Boots, three pair, three pair sometimes in a season. Boots. I've worked money lots and got stuck in the mud during the clown gag, and they'd have to come out and pull me out of my boots, and I get my boots. <laughs> mud shows. That's why they're called mud shows. And the crowd probably thought that was planned then. No. No, they were all muddy. (laughs) Yeah, mud show. Friend of mine's got a book after him, and I don't have a copy called Mud Show. 
Uh, I don't know what else. I'm, what, what would you do during off season? Uh, like November, December, January? Save, save money. Mm -hmm. Save change. I still save change and case it in in the winter. <laughs> Seriously. And I save change from 90 back. The year? Yeah, 90 back. Uh, I don't know. It, it's just a thing. But I still cash in all the other change at the end of November. Just a thing. But would you work, do other jobs between the end of the circus and when it started back up? Whatever I could find. Usually the easiest job to get was a custodian. Which... Then they called janitors. No, I'm a custodian of the school. <laughs> uh, and would you usually winter here? Hugo. Hugo. <laughs> and what did you think of Hugo? Huggo. Huggo. <laughs> Streets need fixed. The only ones that are smooth now is the one from Kelly Miller all the way out to Carson and Barnes. <laughs> used to be that way. <laughs> Did you ever live in the modern trailer park? You mean a, what a trailer trash joint? <laughs> There, there no, I it. always looked for a state park or a nice campground when I had time off, just to get away from it. No, no trailer parks. <laughs> yeah, who's got that on there? Jerry, Jerry. Episodes in trailer parks. <laughs> I don't sleep good, so sometimes I'm up three, four, five in the morning, and I think it's old age. I kind of like watching daylight break. Mm -hmm. I guess you got to do a lot of that when you were on the road. Oh no, it was dark. <laughs> honk, honk, honk. We're gonna move. <laughs> And you'd go off in the darkness, and then you'd see the sun come up, and then there'd be thunder and lightning. Oh, God, another muddy lot. <laughs> and how would you know where you were going? See that arrow and that sign? That's slow down, you're going to make a left. <laughs> then you would get a little route slip for those that could read. <laughs> but you followed the arrows. A lot of times you didn't have to think because they led you right to the lot. So you lost some of thought. <laughs> but I can read a road map. <laughs> yeah, slow down, you're going to make a left. Would you ever get lost? Oh, yeah. Other shows would change the arrows. <laughs> The old days, it was hit and run, hit and run. Each show had their own color? Or were yes, they, were, were they? Oh, their own insignia. I think that's uh, the old one, Clyde Beatty, Cole Brothers. But those are old Cole Brothers. Some of them you couldn't see at night or in the early morning. They were kind of <laughs> I've seen them on paper plates. Draw the arrow. <laughs> I've seen them on top of bridges just for somebody one to agitate. <laughs> no, follow the arrows. I can't. I don't have all this stuff. I didn't know what you wanted, but I've got an archives. <laughs> I hope the museum opens. Did you use or, did you use particular music for your for your act? Oh, 
just the violin. That was from Clockwork Orange. It was a good. <laughs> and then I added a Michael Jackson glow at the high peak. Blah, 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 blah. But I do the fingers. <laughs> Don't ask me. I just did it. It was being accepted. And for a towner going into the circus, I, if I was a gun shooter, I put in knots. <laughs> Well, what was payday like? Wait in line. Wait in line. <laughs> Wait in line. <laughs> Would they pay you cash or check? No, they give you, well, in the old days you got cash. That's why I don't make a lot on Social Security. <laughs> oh, and they cash it at the window, but you had to wait and wait and the line would be real long. <laughs> and would you ever get fined? I never did. <laughs> and what were some of the things you could get fined for? Not showing up for a clown gag. Not showing up for the speck that went around the tent. Bring in the law. <laughs> I'll be right back. Sure. <laughs> Would you do it all over again? Yes. Oh, but I can't. I've fallen down and can't get up. <laughs> well, you mentioned uh, the last time you put on your makeup was for DR's funeral. Could you tell me about DR's funeral? Best funeral I was ever at. It was under a big top in Hugo, out that complex out there. His casket was sitting on two elephant tubs. It was candy apple red with gold handles. There was a whole thing. And then I was honored to do makeup. That's the last time. Hugo closed down. There was a big parade from the horse, blah, 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 all the way to the cemetery. They bust people in. After the funeral, they fed everybody. DR was on ice for months till the show come in. Wherever he died was what I, I got that back there was the first time I ever saw a circus. That's where he died. And he was on ice till the show came in and then they shot him out here. There was a, an old carriage or an old funeral carriage pulled by two, four, six black horses, I think. Can't remember. An antique band wagon from Baraboo, Wisconsin. A parade of no, 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 no. best funeral I was ever at, <laughs> and I felt funny posing at the funeral in clown makeup. <laughs> but that was an honor, and that's the last time I put it on. I'd have to go back and look at the article, give you the date. And did did they ask you to put on the makeup, or did you think I'm putting it on? No, no, I was asked to do it. And how did that make you feel? Last time I had to put that crap on. <laughs> do you remember what you wore? What particular outfit you wore? Probably a, 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 a ruffled shirt, a vest, and paint. I don't know. I can't remember that. That's it. But the article went around the the world.
Yeah, no, I, why he liked me, I have no idea. Not many people liked him. <laughs> I'm sure you made him laugh, though. I have no idea. Well, when, when people think back to Popcorn the Clown in his heyday, what do you want people to remember? He was kind of funny, <laughs> really. I don't know what Bob said, but he always said, you're funny. I said, what? It's tacky clowning. What do you mean? David Rawls called me sick. <laughs> I tried to play off at what was going on. Uh, if it was a Titanic movie, I'd be in a captain's thing in the hat and that. Welcome to the Titanic. I can get you on the top deck. <laughs> Have a pleasant journey. <laughs> Don't ask. One time they rebuilt the Cincinnati Gardens and I was playing there with the show and it was atrocious, whatever they did to it. The tent, I said, welcome to the Cincinnati Gardens, come on in. Yeah, it looks just like it. <laughs> I tried to entertain everybody. Welcome to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Hangar 18. Do you know what's in Hangar 18? <laughs> the one from... Where was that? Where the aliens supposedly landed? Area 51. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you think clowns get a bad rap? Yep. Yep, 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 yep. I was told you're a necessary evil. <laughs> like I said for years, you had a you couldn't dress with performers. But they needed you to fill in the gaps. Yes, but it was kind of nice having your own joint. <laughs> I remember working with who was the sergeant from Gomer Pyle in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Lost that picture of me and him together, but uh, he always had ice cold beer in his <laughs> dressing room. Stars get special treatment. Yes. Would have been nice. Best I got was a private dressing room with a shower and towels. <laughs> and a limo to the restaurant. <laughs> well, that was pretty good, though. <laughs> well, yes. Where was that? Pine, Pine Knob, Michigan, somewhere. Big resort. Did you have a favorite town venue you played? No. No, no. But some shows you would play the same towns over and over like three, four years in a row. And you would meet people from popcorn. You want to come out and have lunch? Oh boy, yes. <laughs> yes, you made friends. You met a lot of interesting people. Yeah, the people. I met uh, the people. I, I liked the public and circus fans. We have circus fans, or they, we used to, I don't know, like baseball fans and football fans. They'd come out and they'd bring a lunch and go pick your mail up. Your mail, you had to tell in advance what town they're going to pick it up. Pay phones. They don't exist anymore. Used to have a carry a jar of change along for the pay phone. And sometimes you forget it. <laughs> then along came ATT credit card. <laughs> and now I have one outside communication. That's it. And the TV was six channels because of that box the government made it by. <laughs> uh, 
times. Pay phones. I see them maybe at Walmart, maybe at Lowe's. So how is uh, clowning different today versus your time? They've become more elite. They've become more elite. That's all I can say. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, depends. It just depends. How could you break into the business today? You have to go through clown college to do No, it? that's to obsolete it? now. It's called experience. No, I, anybody says, oh, I want to get, I should, don't even think about it. <laughs> it's tough. And in the beginning, you were kind of the low rung. Below you were the working people. Above that was cookhouse. Above that was owners. Above that was performers. I went from there to here, okay? Because <laughs> I remember, you're a performer. Clown, that says 35 books. 35 bucks. Oh. And a cookhouse, and a sleeper. <laughs> 35 per week or per show? Per week. Per week. <laughs> I told you, the clowns that I've had about 125 a week, plus cookouts, plus a beautiful sleeper. <laughs> that they provided or you bought the sleeper? No, they provided it. You might get electric, you might not. The shower might work at the end, communal shower. Air conditioning might work. <laughs> I stayed one season just to save money and blah, 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 wear and tear. And the next season I took my van on the road. I said, that's enough of this. Paid somebody for a shower. Fairgrounds, that's got cold, cold water if you're going to shower. <laughs> Yes, yeah, see, you got lights, water, sewer. <laughs> but it was a good life. I enjoyed it. I felt free there. As long as I did my job, nobody bothered me. Yeah. That's probably a good feeling. I did my job and got no harassment. And applause. It's, it was the rush. Mm -hmm. Well, as we wind down, is there anything else you'd like to tell oh, us? Oh, we're winding down. We're winding down. <laughs> Your spring's running out. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I'm just corn. That's it. Just corn. That's it. Today, you're just corn. No, oh, I've been that for a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, most people don't know my name around here. And you like it that way? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Corn. I made it somewhere where you don't make it much. And why, I have no idea. The mud, the rain, the snow, the sleet, the hail, the wrecks, the... Did we blow the arrows? Damn, got to turn around. <laughs> Well, we, we appreciate your time today and, and just sharing a little bit. Well, about I life. don't know. I wouldn't. I didn't even think. I got so much crap. I just brought out. I've had a good life.